about 15 years ago, Jody, it, it was an epic outbreak of um, fall armyworms in Nebraska. And I was hoping that in my 30 year career, I would never see that again. And yet here we are. Surprise! Ta -da! Yeah, well, I am not a turf grass entomologist. I know very little last week about fall armyworm, but I know quite a bit now. And I've seen a lot of the egg masses. People are complaining about these mysterious things stuck to their homes and all of their uh, stationary objects outside. What was interesting, because you showed me a picture of them, you know, underneath a swing set, I believe. And, and I have a picture back from the outbreak 15 years ago where they were, just the bottom of this plastic seat on a swing set was just covered with them. And, and you, you, if you look at the egg mass, they're landing on golf course flags. I mean, I wouldn't think that that would be, but apparently they're sticky in the masses there. But they're, they're really kind of a strange little egg mass. And just the sheer numbers this year of the egg masses that are seen. Yeah, and they're, they're tiny, but they're like in this amount of space. There could be 50 egg masses in there, but each egg mass can have up to 200 little caterpillars in them. So, so that's what makes that population just boom and why we've probably had this outbreak. Right, because we've had armyworms in years past, but they're just kind of a nuisance pest. They eat a little bit of grass and it's not really a big deal. But when the, with the storms we've had and it's moved up the east coast and it's moved up from the southeast, because these are really warm season loving critters, right? Yeah, so they overwinter in the Gulf states and south, so South Florida, South Texas, and they just migrate up. And so, yeah, you're right, we usually get them, but not in these large numbers. And we're actually quite lucky because we'll have fewer generations. And when they go into pupation, hopefully they'll die with the first frost. Well, and the golf course superintendents I talked to in the Southeast say they have multiple generations. And even, um, even in Ohio, they're talking about a second outbreak. They've already had the first one, lots of damage. But I guess the good news is, is that some of the newer chemistries um, you know, the GrubX product that mm -hmm. homeowners can use for grubs actually has an active ingredient, and I'll have you say it. Chlorantranilopril. Thank you. <laughs> that, that is pretty active, and in the golf course trade, the trade product is, is called a celeprin, and they've sprayed their fairways and, and other locations, and so they, they really aren't as, the damage shouldn't be as prevalent as we saw in the past, because we really didn't have any products that would have that kind of residual and, and also, you know, low toxicity products, like Celebrin, has, mm -hmm. doesn't even have a caution on the label. So that's a really good news that, that these products are safer and at the same time effective against something that can be as devastating as armyworms. That is good news. So did it have to be applied in the spring then to still be effective for the fall armyworm caterpillar? According to the reports from Michigan and from Ohio and from Indiana, basically if you put it in, in mid-May, they're getting good control now. And if they put their grub control products in, you know, May, June, which is the normal timing for those long mm -hmm. residual products, they're getting good control of uh, fall armyworms now. Okay, so for people that didn't treat, the best thing to do now if they're seeing egg masses and if they've seen them hatched, if they weren't able to scrape them down, power wash them, hose them off, or wipe them off, if they've emerged, they will start feeding on the turf and you've got like a 10 day window to use something like BT, or spinosad, which are organic products, right. to treat for those young caterpillars. But once they get a little bit bigger, they're harder to, to manage or control. What kind of things could they use on their I curve? think bifenthrin products are supposed to be really good for a knockdown rescue treatment. Okay, and those come in like a spray and granular. So which one? You, you want the spray and you want to get it on and water it in. Okay, and always read and follow the label. Always. And if you've got like a, a lawn service, let them know that you've seen these egg masses and you believe that you're gonna be having fall armyworm caterpillars. Right, and we're not seeing the caterpillars yet, so we're so much delayed over everything else, but we have seen the egg masses and some of the early stages are, are prevalent. But we might get by with a single generation, which is good news. Which will be good news. Yeah, so people are asking what, when we'll see the damage to the turf. And we're thinking they feed for about two to three weeks. Their development, like all insects, really depend on temperature and food source. And I mean, they're gonna have food resources in our, our turf, on our, in our landscape. So what would be the timing of this? So I think if we're gonna see any activity, it's, it's probably gonna be um, mid to late September and mm -hmm. maybe into October. And then hopefully we'll get some low, these are warm season critters, right? They like mm -hmm. it hot and we get some low temperature nights um, you know, then maybe we don't get a next generation. Mm -hmm. 
which is, you but know. But they like those cool season grasses. But they the love problem. the cool season grasses. And it's even really interesting to me, but 15 years ago when we had the first outbreak, we saw where they would ignore a bluegrass lawn and prefer tall fescue. And they're reporting that in other locations that have already had the feeding and are worried about a second generation, which intrigues me because we always look at bluegrass as having, you know, all these disease issues and everything and, and, and why it would preferentially feed on tall fescue. But when it gets done with the tall fescue, it'll move to the bluegrass. So don't think, oh, I'm going to switch over to bluegrass and I'll never have this problem. Mm -hmm. It just loves, and, it, and not just the irrigated lawns, but, you know, your native grass plantings, it, they just like grass and and they'll, they'll chew it down and, and take it to the surface. And th this is gonna be a problem in the future um, fall in that the thinning of that turf, even if you get some recovery, that thinning of that turf is gonna result in um, thin lawns that are gonna be really susceptible to weed invasion. So they gotta think about what, mm -hmm. what they're gonna do about the potential for there. But we're not there yet. And maybe you had the luxury of having, you know, those preventatives down for grubs and other insects and you're gonna get that carryover control, which is what we're kind of hoping for. Um, and it's not gonna be near the problem that we saw um, 15 years ago when lawns were truly devastated. So I'm, I'm fairly optimistic we're gonna be relatively fine as long as people keep their eyes open and scout. Well, I do wanna talk about what the caterpillars look like when they're in those damaging stages. So these caterpillars are very tiny when they emerge from those egg masses and they can get up to about a, like a, an inch and a quarter. And it's those last, four out of six instars or life stages that they're very damaging. And when you look at them, they will have, they will look like brown caterpillars that everybody sees, but they'll have three light longitudinal stripes. They'll have four little black dots near the posterior or butt end. And the, the, the identifying characteristic though, that's really important for us when we wanna look at a picture or a specimen is the head capsule will have this inverted Y shape. So we need those pictures and those samples to be able to identify them. And homeowners can do that themselves too if they can find those characteristics. And, and I love the inverted Y uh, identifier, but I just turn it up, it's no longer inverted. Cause it just- Oh, well it's like this. Yeah, I know it goes like this, but if you just flip it up and it heads up, then a I can y. see that it's a Y. Yeah. But that's because I don't understand entomologist. <laughs>